Hey y'all, we are back to my favorite subject today, which is the fire movement. Today's video is a collab with Kevin and Eliza over at the Adventures and Us. Hey, how's it going? It's Adventures and Us, and I'm Kevin, and we're doing a collab with Quest to Fire on the misconceptions of the fire movement and what they get wrong in the media. It's to address simple things like what the fire movement really means and it doesn't mean to deprive yourself of everything and just live frugally forever. On the channel we'll also discuss our investing strategies and different ways we're going to try to achieve fire through the stock market. If you love the idea of the fire movement community then come on over to the channel. We'll make a lot more content for you. Alright guys, peace out. See you there. I will link to their channel in the description box below. If you have not heard of them, go and check them out. Their channel is awesome. Don't forget to subscribe while you're there. So, if you're new to my channel and unfamiliar with the FIRE movement, FIRE stands for Financial Independence Retire Early. And if you were to just Google search the FIRE movement, you would hear all sorts of myths, and that is what we're going to discuss today. The FIRE movement has a lot of naysayers out there. They want to try to pick apart every little thing about it to discredit it. Not sure why, but I think that negative news tends to get more clicks than positive news, right? Doesn't matter what the subject is. So today we're going to discuss some of the most common myths that I hear about the FIRE movement. And like most myths, there is some basis of truth in these myths. So we'll talk about that as well. I've got, I tried to pick a top five myths for the FIRE movement, but I mean, just thinking for 30 seconds, I came up with six really quickly and easily. So. We're going to discuss six today, and this is in no particular order. Myth number one, if you're in the FIRE movement, then you have to have a high income to retire early, to reach financial independence. And this is a myth, y'all. The FIRE movement is loosely based on the 4% rule of thumb, which is a safe rate at which you can withdraw from your portfolio and theoretically not draw down on your principal of said portfolio. Now it is a rule of thumb, it is not set in stone. And obviously, if you have a high income and you're able to save a lot, then you're going to be able to reach financial independence faster, right? And I'm not denying that income can absolutely be a problem if you have financial independence as your goal. But saying that you must have a high income to reach financial independence is false because reaching financial independence is purely a function of math. It has to do with your savings rate. It has to do with what your annual spending is, what your expenses are. If you can figure out what your annual expenses are, multiply that by 25, that's the number that you need in order to employ the 4% rule. Now, obviously, if your expenses are low, then you're not going to need as much money as someone with higher expenses, higher spending, a higher lifestyle. So it's a myth that you have to have a high income to achieve FIRE. In fact, on my journey, I am a middle class income myself and I have no doubt that I will achieve the FIRE movement. I'm trying to optimize areas of my life where I don't find value, stop spending money there, and focus my finances on areas that I do find value. And that really is the core concept of the FIRE movement. So no, you don't have to have a high income. If you're struggling in the income department, then you've got two options, either increase your income or decrease your expenses. In the FIRE movement, preferably, we like to do both. That way we can optimize our finances. Efficiency is key for the FIRE movement. Myth number two. You have to be a young person to be in the FIRE movement. And it's true that the FIRE movement is pretty popular with the millennial generation, 
but you don't have to be a young person to be in the FIRE movement. You can pursue financial independence at any age. If you are still breathing, there is still time. And it's never too late to try to optimize your financial situation. However, like with these other myths, there is some basis of truth. Now, if you're just getting started at 60 years old and you're starting from zero, then yeah, you know, maybe it's going to be extremely difficult for you to retire early at this point. There's not enough time left to reach your financial independence number, but that does not mean that you can't pursue it. The trick starting later in life is that you're going to have to learn how to optimize every area of your finances, really focus on the big three when it comes to expenses, housing, food, transportation, see how you can best optimize those and go from there. Many people scoff at the FIRE movement basically because they are unwilling to make the lifestyle choices that would propel them towards financial independence fast. They just don't see the value in having a roommate as an adult, for example. But other people might be willing to do that once they understand how that will affect their savings rate and propel them forward in their financial future. Myth number three, kind of going along with myth number two, is if you're in the fire movement, then you have to be minimalist or frugal. And no, you don't have to. Now, it just so happens that being frugal, being minimalist, does have a lot of parallels with the fire movement and that is where this myth is based on but if you want to live a lavish lifestyle you can there is a thing known as fat fire for those people who are going for a really large portfolio so that way when they do retire early they have more to spend and that's their choice to do so you don't have to forego every luxury in your life if it truly brings you value. You just have to, again, optimize and be efficient. Figure out what truly does bring you value in your life. Focus your finances on those things moving forward. Efficiency is key. Once people really get into and start to understand the FIRE movement and start to understand how their finances work, how compound interest works, what opportunity cost means, people tend to start reevaluating what they think they may have valued before and now decide that maybe it's not as important as they once thought that it was. They would rather have the money from whatever that thing is to invest towards their future. Myth number four, if you're in the FIRE movement, then you have to use credit cards. We're all about the credit card reward points. We're all about travel hacking. And yes, this myth is also based in some truth. There are tons of people in the FIRE movement who use credit cards for the cash back rewards. Yours truly does that. And there's a lot more people in the fire movement who use credit cards for travel hacking to get free travel. Travel is one of the things that tops the list as far as what people value in the fire movement. And once they reach financial independence, they want to do more of. So it behooves those type of people to learn how to do some travel hacking. And y'all, if you can't be responsible with credit cards, don't use them. If you are just morally opposed to the concept of credit cards, don't use them. You don't have to use a credit card to be in the FIRE movement or to reach financial independence. Again, efficiency and optimization. People in the FIRE movement will use a credit card for cash back rewards, like myself, to just buy things that we normally would, to pay our monthly bills. And if I get one, two, three percent cash back, for just putting these bills and usual monthly expenses on a credit card, then yes, I'm gonna take advantage of that. It doesn't add up to a ton for me using a cash back card, but uh, last month I think I got $42 back. So that's something, it counts. Myth number five about the FIRE movement. If you're in the FIRE movement, then the only way you're ever gonna reach financial independence is to have some physical real estate properties and become a landlord. 
There is a heavy argument out there for this path to financial independence. But one thing that I love about the FIRE movement is that there is no one set path for everyone. You get to choose your own story. You get to choose how best to reach financial independence for you as an individual or for your family, depending on whatever your life situation is, wherever you're at in the world. I love that the Financial Independence Retire Early community is so diverse. Everyone is working towards financial independence in a little bit different of a way. And you can learn from these people. That is what inspired me to start my channel because y'all, women are underrepresented on YouTube in the FIRE movement. If y'all know of another woman on YouTube who is in the FIRE movement says, hey, my goal here is the FIRE movement. I am working towards financial independence. Let me know down below because there's some couples out there I can think of. There's a lot of guys that I follow in the FIRE movement that are on YouTube, but I think women need to be a little bit better represented. And so that's why I'm here documenting my journey but there's any number of ways to reach financial independence and you don't have to do real estate if you don't want to. I am choosing not to. I have no interest in becoming a landlord. I have no interest in trying to obtain a property manager and keep up with them. The closest I get to real estate is investing in REITs, real estate investment trusts. I have a REIT ETF, Vanguard's v and Q, in my Roth IRA. That's as close as I'm getting to real estate. Now, the argument is that the fastest way to get to financial independence is to go down the real estate path. Get yourself leveraged with good debt and have a lot of rental properties and you will be propelled forward at an alarming rate towards financial independence. So if you're willing to take that risk and go down that path, that's great. It definitely can and does work, but it's not for me. So I will continue with my strategy. And number six, the bonus one. If I had to pick one myth about the FIRE movement that I hear most often, It'd probably be this one, and that is, if you're in the FIRE movement, then you have to retire early, or you're not really retired if you earn any income at all. Guys, really I don't even know where to start with this one. <laughs> People tend to forget that retirement is an entirely new concept, y'all. Retirement's been around for less than 100 years. Okay, people weren't living long enough, 150, 200 years ago, to have a retirement. And if by chance they did, it wasn't a very long one. Retirement is an entirely new concept. And to me, it just means that when you wake up in the morning, you are able to choose what you want to do with your day and not be forced to go to a W-2 job every day to pay for your lifestyle. Retiring to me just means that you are free. You are financially free to pursue whatever hobbies and interests you have. If they earn you some money, so be it. That's okay. So personally, I feel like the FIRE movement could and should be rebranded to financial independence, recreational employment. But, you know, I don't think the acronym is going to be changed anytime soon but it is what it is. Everybody gets hung up about the retire early part of the FIRE movement. Yes, my plan is to retire early, but that is some years away from now. And maybe by then, this YouTube channel will be monetized. People will probably point the finger and say, well, you're not retired because you're earning money on YouTube. Let them think that. I am on YouTube right now not earning a cent because I enjoy doing it. I think it's a fun hobby. And how awesome would it be to be financially independent and still make YouTube videos because you like doing it and you don't even need any income that comes in from your channel. You just do it for the joy of it. That is retirement to me. You do not have to be 
retired early and go and sit on a beach and drink your days away. You don't have to retire early and go play golf every day. Who is anyone to say what retirement is exactly? I think that what retirement looks like is completely up to the individual. So if you are opening a business post-retirement and that business earns you money and you're working on it, I still say you're retired, even if you've got a great income from this business. The point is you're able to choose what you want to do and if that's your passion project and you're able to do it and not really need the income, how awesome is that? So those are some of the most common myths that I hear all the time about the FIRE movement. Let me know down below, if you were to reach financial independence and choose to retire early, what would that look like for you? Guaranteed that it's a different picture from mine. When I fire early, I won't lie y'all, I plan on living a pretty low key life. I'm obviously going to keep doing the YouTube channel because I enjoy doing it. But I love the thought of just being able to be fully present in each moment every day without having to worry about looking at the clock constantly, without having to structure my day around when do I have to go to work? When do I have to start getting ready to go to work? When am I off work? When do I want to go on vacation? When do I need to put in a request at work so that I can get some time off? I look forward to being able to just wake up in the morning and not really have any structure for my day. I can get up, be present, slowly sip my coffee in the morning, head out to the gym, spend a couple hours at the gym if I want to, come back home, actually cook myself a lunch. I don't have to worry about being at a job where my lunch hour is rushed. I can take my time to cook healthy meals. That's another thing that I look forward to. Spending time with my husband, spending time with our dogs and not having to have my day be structured around what time it is and when do I have to go to work. There are any number of things that I can do around here. I live in Western North Carolina and there are some beautiful hikes around here that I can take and not have to worry about what day of the week it is and whether or not I have to go to work and whether or not I'll have the energy to actually go and do that hike. I will be able to structure my days with whatever feels best when I wake up in the morning and that seems like living the dream to me. So let me know what you think down below. What would your retire early lifestyle look like? Thanks again to Kevin and Eliza for doing this collab with me. And again, I will link to their channel in the description box below. Y'all don't forget to see what they have to say about the myths on the fire movement. If you're new to my channel and you liked this video and got some value out of it, then give it a like below and subscribe. I would love to have you and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.